So, uh, so yeah, kicker and punter in college. Um, yeah. So, um, and and uh, love wrestling as I was talking with uh, Mike up here. So I got a seven-year-old son who I'm like throwing all in into like the sports. I'm like one of those crazy dads. It's, like, got him going to every single league, every single camp. It's it's crazy. If anybody's got young kids, it's just it's what has happened in, in youth sports in the last 20 years is, it's amazing, it's kind of out of control. Um, at the same time, I'm like kind of like infatuated with it, it's really kind of weird. Um, so I love being here tonight, I love seeing you guys here, like this is kind of a cool place for me to be. I'm like this usher in um, Heidi. Um, I love the energy that you guys have, and I love the fact that, that uh, for those of you who are taking a big risk, like you've got big, you know what I mean? You got big guts, right? That different. You got some big, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I love the fact that you guys take the risk, that you do it. Um, it's different to do it. Like, it's different to go out there on your own and venture out and do stuff like that. Um, and uh, I'm a guy that, um, so real quick, my background is I went to Cornell and um, I got into the sports world pretty early on. I went to uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, San Diego Chargers, and I got out of the business completely. I went to Harvard Business School. And um, truthfully, ever since, since then, I, like, I write down an idea that I've got this like, massive notepad of all these different crazy ideas, and, um, which is nothing, right? It's like just paper, right? It's like if you don't do anything with them, it's really not an entrepreneur, it's just an idea. And uh, so I give you guys a lot of credit. And in fact, one time I remember um, my, my boss at the Washington Capitals, the CMO of Washington Capitals, I was like, they were really, really good at selling group tickets, right? Really, really good. That's kind of our business, we sell group tickets, really good. And uh, so, so I had this idea one day, and I'm like, you know what? If you can sell group tickets, can't you sell like group anything? So I put together this little business plan. I walked down to my to the owner, his name's Ted Leonis, this kind of AOL guy. And uh, I'm like, yeah, Ted, I got this really good idea. I'd just like to hear you out or hear me out. And um, so I kind of you know, pitch him this whole idea of like how you sell groups of anything. He goes, Tim, he goes, I love that idea. I love it so much. But I just invested in this company. Um, it's called Groupon. It's gonna be a billion dollar idea. Mm-hmm. Great, great. Now go back and do your real job, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so that's kind of me, right? I'm this idea, I'm this idea guy. But I give you guys a lot of credit for those of you who've uh, kind of ventured in and, and taken the risk <coughs> to, uh, to really go for it. It's it's awesome. I love I love the fact that you guys have the courage to do that. Um, so tonight let's talk a little bit about the Sixers, you know, and uh, kind of what we're going through. It's a little bit of a uh, uh, a turnaround situation. Um, I might. Are you guys laughing? Seriously? Seriously? You laughed at that? Come on! Um, wow! Wow! Right? Holy cow! So, um, so okay. So, that's the thing. So, let me give you a quick background after 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 uh, Harvard Business School. I go and I work for Comcast, and um, I can tell you later some of you here. So, I went to work in this group. Um, in uh, in Comcast, new new media development group, and essentially we created uh, new businesses out of, out of advanced technology. So I was like one of two business people um, amongst like 15 different engineers working on things from uh, this is back in 2001. So like a connected home, um, uh, what was it like 1594, 13? Does that make ring a bell? Like the technology that connected everything and peer to peer. All this crazy stuff, voice activated, remote control, multiple DVR. So I, I was the business guy trying to figure out like how do you create new businesses out of these advanced technologies. Um, fascinating opportunity, fascinating company. Um, it just I have immense respect for, for what they've done with that, that firm, um, that company. So um, three, four years into it though, I get the bug, I go back to sports. Um, I worked for Philadelphia Eagles twice, as a CMO of Philadelphia Eagles, CMO of the Washington Capitals. And then I came over to the uh, to the 76ers or the CMO. Um, definitely, as you can tell, I got a, I got a, a pretty big sports. Um, uh, you know, I'm very like I love sports. I love talking about sports. Um, I, my father coached college football. My brother uh, was a defense coordinator here, Sean McDermott. Now he's been defense coordinator for his, his fifth year at uh, the Carolina Panthers. So. Um, I'll put a plug in for him. He's, he's one of two defensive coordinators who's had the top ten defense in the last uh, in the last three years. So 
Um, too bad he's not here. Um, just saying. Just saying. Just saying. I'm just saying. Right? Um, so, um, so the turnaround, yeah, the turnaround of the Sixers and kind of what it's been like. So I, I started there, I guess, about 19 months ago. And, uh, and it's a classic turnaround situation. And just, I, I kind of give you like my thoughts in terms of what we've been doing, so like how do you actually go through um, what we've been going through in terms of the turn. And um, there's a couple of different categories. So people, processes, products, um, brand, and content for us. Those are like five kind of core building blocks. So there's a couple of things that come up underline those. Um, we've really did that towards the sales side of the house first and getting kind of the sales structure put together. And, um, and then now, like, the second stage that we enter now is kind of more the marketing side. But just to talk a little bit about the people, I had a boss, um, Joe Banner, the president, president of the Eagles go out. And he stood in front of us one time, and he said something that's really hit me. He's like, every single team, it's kind of the same, right? Put 11 guys on offense, 11 guys on defense. And we've got 15 coaches, they've got 15 coaches. We've got eight people in our scouting department, they've got eight people in our scouting department. Kind of do the same thing. We don't have we don't have a secret recipe. We don't have a, a patent. Right? We're not KFC, we don't have a secret recipe. Um, really what we got is people. And what's in our minds? And that's a secret recipe. And that was always to me like a really, really strong, profound statement to me. Because it's really true when you think about the, the landscape of professional sports, basketball, baseball, football, doesn't matter. It's really true statement. And um, so from our standpoint, the distinction we spent the last few years, we're still going through it, getting the right people. Um, so that was the easiest process to go through, and I'm sure you guys in your own kind of walks of life have to go through that process as well. Um, so number one for us is people. Number two is processes. Um, we had a lot of open processes, you know, in terms of like how do you get from point A to point B, how do you make a, something more efficient. Um, so we went through a whole kind of re-engineering of how we go about business. Um, which really is tied to number three, which is our products. Now, well, I can't control products in the sense of like I can't control my losses, um, unfortunately. Um, and that's the hardest thing about being a marketer in a professional sports, right? So if you are a Starbucks, you can theory control, you know, the taste of your coffee, the experience. I cannot control who's going to lose. I cannot control what a player may say or do or if he gets traded or hurt or so on and so forth. Um, which is a whole, it's really challenging and it's also kind of fascinating, right? Um, because I have to be able to say I can maximize output, win or lose, right? I have a job to win or lose, maximize output. Um, but we just spent a lot of time talking about our product in terms of like from a sales standpoint. What are the products that we're actually selling? Re engineering a lot of what those products look like. So for the first probably 18 months, we focused a lot on the sales side of the house, really getting the sales side, and quite frankly, the overarching culture of the building. Um, and so people process products, and the next two areas is kind of the market side. And that's kind of where we're at now, really building out our brand strategy and what our brand really stands for. Um, as you come into an organization, there's 500 executives, and there's you know 100 different people that work there now over the last 18 months. You get a lot of feeling like, what is the brand? And so codifying our brand has been a really tremendous exercise to go through. Um, really being able to nail down exactly what we want to stand for, and then what is our kind of positioning statement in the marketplace. You know, if you look at the Eagles, they're very much about passion, history, um, you know, a little bit of toughness and edge. If you look at the flyer, they're certainly about, you know, they, at one point they call them uh, tag with vengeance, right? It's like we would say, vengeance and fighting. And then you look at the Phillies, it's kind of like a little bit late, late back Sunday night or Sunday day. Um, so kind of look at those brands. Where do we fit? So we want this really, um, really strong exercise to codify what is our brand. So over the next several months, we'll be kind of putting that out in terms of what we stand for, what we believe we are, what our fans want to believe we are. Um, so brand one, and then two are, is, is content. And um, so we made a huge investment into content. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of owners who I've met that have said they kind of look at the, the team landscape a little bit differently. Not so much as the team, but kind of the media house, the media factor, the content factor. And um, so we spent a lot of time investing in content. And um, generally, like a pretty strong buzz with these days of content marketing. I kind of um, stopped at that a little bit because I feel like to a certain degree, Teams have been doing content marketing for, for decades uh, in terms of the things that we do, the way that we do them, you know, creating content, publishing content. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see the concept of content marketing uh, becomes a powerful thing that I've been doing for a long time. So, um, from a high level start data standpoint, those are the things that we really just focus on in terms of the company. Um, obviously, you know, we're at a point from a basketball standpoint that 
Um, we now have Merle's oil, which will be get a number three draft pick uh, coming. We've got um, potential four and one draft picks to be on the team next year. Dario Sars from Turkey, so hopefully we get him back next year. And we've got the most salary cap space in the NBA, which could lead us to have you know, a free agent too. So when you look, look forward, this has been a painful uh, couple of years. <laughs> If you look ahead one more year, we're really, really situated to explode, I think, in the market, uh, which is fascinating because I know in 2001, when this team went to the playoffs, it was electric. And like I said, I've been here in the Eagles, I've seen the Phillies run, and 2001 was pretty special. Uh, unusually special, quite frankly. It just really stands out in my head of all the people that came out of woodwork who were experienced. <laughs> so I know that there's an amazing amount of passion that's really built to be kind of hands up for this, for this team, this brand, and um, we just get through, I think, one more year, we're going to be in a pretty good position. I could respond to that. Um, from an innovation standpoint and technology standpoint, um, let, let me rewind a little bit. We have a mission statement. It's important you guys uh, kind of understand what our mission statement is. It's become the most, um, the kind of preeminent sports entertainment property um, in two ways. One, people. Two, innovation. Um, so talk a little bit about the people and kind of the energy that we support on people. Um, innovation is a big part of what we do. Innovating is difficult. Um, innovating in a structured environment or institutionalizing innovation is, is certainly difficult. Um, but one of the things that I think we've done really well is we have the largest sales staff in sports. We've got 120 different uh, people that sell and sell and sell. When I say sell, I'm selling tickets. That is the largest sports um, ticket sales staff in the country and the world. And um, they're all 22 year old, 23 year old, 24 year old guys, girls. And um, what they bring to the table is really magical. The culture that they create is magical. And um, it's different. You often hear about millennials and the kind of the environment that they create. Um, and we're really blessed to have so many young kids on our, on our team because honestly, they, if you, if you empower them, they're amazing. That's what I found. If you just give them an opportunity, they are amazing. So when we talk about like cult, culture and innovation, um, or I should say, when we talk about innovation, a lot of it is driven for us by our culture. And so we will purposely and very, very frequently go out to our staff in a crowdsourcing way and say, here's the problem. You guys solve it. Right? And we may give them kind of structured um, elements to that, but we may not. We may just say, here's the problem. By 2 o'clock Friday, give me your answers. Or we may say, here's the problem, here's five captains and split up, and you guys take 20 people and go and sell the problem. And it is amazing what they come back with. Absolutely amazing in terms of the ideas, the innovation, um, to the point where we really want to emphasize um, our in-game experience and the fan engagement piece of it. So we said, here's the deal. It's really difficult to scale good customer service. Right? That's, that's not easy to do. Uh, but here's the thing, like, when, when somebody comes to a game, if you can create one memory for them, like, I hear it all the time, somebody will come back and be like, I met so-and-so, I met Dr. J on the side, just amazing, it was so cool. Or my, my son was at a hockey game and he caught a puck, he went over the glass and he caught a puck. That's really, really cool, but it's like really difficult to scale a puck going over the glass and catch it. <laughs> so, um, so the thought was this. We've got 150 you know, people on our staff, we've got 180 people on our staff. Um, if every one of those people, every one of those persons can go out and create one memory at every game, 41 games, like that scale is five or 6,000 different memories that we create. So that was like a high level strategy. We put it out to four young people on our staff. We said, here you go. We don't know where you're going to come back with. We don't know how you're going to do this. So go figure it out. And they came back and they just owned it, right? They just owned this problem. It was so amazing, so refreshing. The vibrancy, the, the fresh perspective that they brought to it. And they went and they created this thing called 76 seconds. And the idea is that it takes 76 seconds to do something magical. Pretty easy. Right, 76 seconds. And they put all these different things around it, like maybe get somebody free ticket, maybe get them, you can buy them drinks, you can take them down to the court free game, you can take them to, you know, go meet the coach after the game. Like, we just said, great, go, power. And um, it's just, it's been, it's been magical to see um, when we're able to do that, like what comes out of it. It's really, really amazing, really refreshing. 
Um, the other big area for us around innovation technology, as you might expect, is, is around um, in our digital pieces. So, um, and then I'll say this kind of both ways. On one hand, we are very fortunate that we get a lot of people kind of knocking on our doors. And people will say, you know, I got the latest great idea. And so on one hand, it's really great. Uh, on the other hand, I think as an industry, we have to figure out a better process for innovation to occur. And um, because what happens now is it's two halves in my opinion. So if you've got an idea, you call me, right? The process is you got to find a name, find me an email, track somebody down the me, call me, get an appointment, make a pitch, I'm dizzy, I push you off for 30 days, I push you off for 60 days, I call and meet you, I say it's really cool, right? I put you in a corner, 30 more days, goodbye. You, man, you email me again, you get a second meeting with me, I go, oh crap, this is really cool, I forgot about this, let me bring Bob and James to the meeting, now another 30 days goodbye, right? And that process goes, and all of a sudden it's six months to a year. And you're doing that for us, for the New York Mets, for the New Jersey Devils, so on, so on, so on. It's totally inefficient. Um, so I think as an industry, we have to figure out how to do a better job of making it simpler and easier to innovate and purposely innovate. <laughs> right now, um, being self-critical, I think I would say that we're we're too uh, we're too happenstance and not innovating around our purpose. Uh, so it's like if you've got a great idea and I think it's really cool, you know, I take the meeting, right? Which is great. As opposed to let me figure out a structured way to say these are the four areas that we want to innovate around, and then tell you or put that out to the market, and then you can tell me if you have an idea that fits it. So there's a gap there that we have to figure out and solve. Um, still kind of getting there. But um, what's what's going to help us as a company and as an end of the industry think, is that innovation. Um, if you look at what's happening in the analytics space, um, there's, there's a whole movement that's happened in the last 10 years around analytics. And um, it's just fascinating you know, what's happening in that space in terms of not just the sports side of health, but the non sports side of health. We put more energy and emphasis into database marketing, CRM, uh, predictive analytics, um, trying to get to the point of the AI. Um, then in the last three years, it's just been an explosion in how much time I, think I spent on that and what I did, like I said, you know, four or five years ago. And, um, and then I was on the basketball side of the house and what they do and how many people they staff up with in terms of staffing the really hardcore analytics side, which has now been rated, I think, we ranked at number one in all the sports for analytics. Um, so it's really fascinating. And then you start to look in, into the wearables and the tech devices and what's now possible. Uh, I saw the other day that the Cowboys uh, did something where they're using drones to film the practice. And they're also using, um, I think it's a virtual reality, a virtual reality um, where you can basically see, if you're a coach, you can see what your quarterback is saying. Right, which if anybody has got a kid, you're trying to teach a kid like how to be quarterback. Right? When you drop back to a pass, there's, there's like different levels of, of a read, the progression. So you may be looking at this receiver, then to that one, then to this one. And so as a quarterback, or as a coach, you need to know that your quarterback goes from here to here to here. Well, if you can actually see what they see, that's pretty cool. And if you can see what they see and actually do it without people, that's even cooler. Right? So if you did this all through um, this all of reality, and you can actually have them practice without anybody on the field, they can do it in their backyard, that's really powerful. Now if you can take that and scale that to kids, that's really powerful. Um, so that's the way the industry is going. The whole sports tech is a, is a really up and coming version opportunity uh, for entrepreneurs. Um, I would tell you that selling into sports teams is difficult for anybody to get that idea. It's really, really difficult. It's sort of like the sales cycle long. We typically don't spend tons of money. Um, and so I would say if you're building a business case around selling into a sports team, don't. Um, if you're building a business case around selling into a sports team, you think it's a really good, high profile customer, different answer, right? That's a great answer. But don't go to this case that is all about, I'm going to sell to 120 major teams that are out there because uh, you probably don't have a very big business in the next day. Uh, so, with that, I'd love to like, open up questions and answer anything I can. Yeah, just repeat the question. Just a little bit. Sure. 
What you got? You want to ask that drill meter now? <laughs> what are you uh, building innovation around the marketing platform? What are you building innovation around the marketing platform? Um, yeah, so um, as I said, we're trying to do more structure on So one was in game experience. That's a big piece in game experience. Um, right or wrong, uh, I'll bring it to the NFL. The NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell, said quite pretty frequently, and often that, um, that the at-home experience is so good that the teams and the league have to figure out a way to reinvent themselves uh, or make the in-game experience better by what you said. Um, I, I would say, I would take that to the next level and say, it's not that we have to make the in-game experience better, what you do, is that we do have to be in the in-game experience that we like to try to Catching up to the broadcast side is a good thing. If you're going to keep selling tickets, if your model is going to be season ticket based, we have to rethink what a season ticket is. We have to think about what a season ticket looks like, what it gets you, uh, and really be willing to just like throw out the old and like, re like, rethink and restart it. Um, so we spent a lot of time about like, what can we do in game? And on some level, you, 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 you default to all the new technologies when you start to say that, which, which isn't necessarily wrong. Um, but I'll also say there's something that we have in sports which is pretty cool, which is we've got these traditions. And so one thing that we have um, in the sporting environment inside of the arena that may have nothing to do with technology that you can't get at home. Right? So if you go to a Philadelphia you know, uh, Eagles game and they score a touchdown and they sing the fight song, and there's 7,000 people singing that fight song, it's pretty cool, right? You can't quite do that at home. So I do think um, on one level, we certainly look for technology to help drive like, what can we do in the game piece. Um, and I think there's all sorts of amazing stuff that come down the pipe with uh, hologram technology and, and beyond that. Um, but I also think there's something in simplistic way too, not losing sight of just even things like the traditions that make it pretty special. Um, like on the hologram, by the way, I said this like 10 years ago, so I think it's gonna happen. <laughs> but uh, but the idea that you could basically go to Lincoln Financial Field and watch the World Cup that is being played in London, right, and see it, see it there on the field, it's been like one of my visions for a long time. And I think at some point you'll have that as a way to do something. I don't think that's far away. Yes? Uh, so I'd say NBA players more so than any other professional athletes are oftentimes um, marketing organizations of their own. Uh, how do you deal with that as a team? And do you try that? Do you see that as a problem sometimes? Or is it something that you feel is like synergy with trying to market the team versus players trying to market themselves? Um, I mean, look, you, you try and get ahead as much as possible. You try and create relationships with the players, you try and create relationships with their agents. Uh, which are typically the people doing that sort of marketing. Uh, because they may be going out to a car dealer to try and get their, their player a car dealer. That's not ideal. If we've got a car deal with company X, they go do a car deal with company Y. Right? So, so yes, you try and get ahead of that. And um, it's really just communication and developing a relationship with the players and the agents. One of the things that Battle does as well is they take, uh, they take a day in the off season, or I guess early uh, beginning of the season, and they talk about the business of basketball. So myself and, and other executives will go out and we'll sit there with the players, and we'll just kind of go through, like, this is the business, this is how we make money, this is how much we sell on tickets, what we do in sponsorship, um, and just trying to explain to them, right, what we do. Because a lot of them, um, no cost at all, they just don't know all that goes into running a, you know, a, a, a professional franchise. And so, uh, so for the most part, we, we don't run into a ton of challenges and problems. For the most part, um, you know, we've got really good relationships with the players and the agents. Um, it's always the case in this situation, but for the most part, it's just communication. Yeah? I will say your sales are good because I do have season tickets, so. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I need more of you. <laughs> Now, and, and, and the in-game experience has been fantastic because yeah, I took yeah. my daughter down on the court. Yeah. I met the coach. 
you know, for yeah. eating things. So Which is amazing. I, I, can I, can I, you know, go back to sure. share what you went through? So our coach does something that is truly unheard of. Truly unheard of. So about an hour before every game, in our post-game press conference room, we've got, say, you know, maybe half the size of this room. And we take about 20 or so season ticket members, and uh, we invite them down. And they sit just like this, and our coach comes out. There's a right here in the locker room. He literally walks out. And he just talks to them for 20 minutes. And I say, he's like lathered up, right? He's answered all the questions. He's, he's all like, he's very intense about it. He loves it. He's sweating. And this is an hour before the game. I have never heard of or seen another coach do anything like that. Um, it's, it's really, really special, really fascinating. So that's cool. Okay. So, so I was going to ask, I mean, you said in your opening, you talked about having big guts, you know, starting something. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious about you and your situation. So you took over 19 months ago. Basically, the Sixers were at the bottom. Yep. And there was no, I mean, the, the light at the end of the tunnel is a ways down the road. What, what convinced you and what the thought process? I thought the light was closer. Uh, <laughs> I did too. That's why I'm at six minutes. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I was probably like a lot of other people, like, hey, shoes, draft, um, 2000, what was that? 2000. It's last year. Well, the year before, right? With uh, with the last one. Yeah, but yo, and then you did some. I mean, right, right. Um, so yeah, I was, I was probably like a lot of people. You know, I'm like, I was pretty, pretty excited, and uh, and uh, as I got to kind of learn more about like the way we're doing it and understanding the way we do it. Um, it was might have been one of my owners said um, well I'm not sure if that's accurate, but somebody I heard them say that there's an arbitrage opportunity in professional sports and uh, that arbitrage opportunity is in patience. Because most most people won't have patience to do it right. Um, whether you're an executive, you're a GM, you're a coach, you're um, an owner, like you just you, you run out of patience, right? Because if you're any one of those people or any person that works in an organization, it's hard. It's hard to like not want to accelerate the growth, right? It's hard not want to make this plan come faster. And you can. You can do it. You can make it come faster. And it'll put you in the middle. And that's what we've been. So we can absolutely play acceleration. Absolutely not a problem. We can, um, we can accelerate it and, and it would put us back to the middle. And, um, and, and the cool thing about the, our market and our general manager and our coach, that's not what they're trying. They're really trying to build a championship. And so the shortcut theory, just, they're not, it's, it's tempting. But they won't do it. And um, so that's the, that's the piece of, that, that sort of discipline, I think is pretty unique and gives me a lot of hope that at the end of the day, it's a lot easier for them if we're winning, right? They certainly like to walk down the streets and you know get that out of the way, um, as opposed to what are you doing? What do you think, right? I'm sure they like to do it. And um, they're willing to stay to the plan, stay to the plan. And it is hard to do that. And so it's amazing discipline. Um, all of our owners, we have a, like a dozen or so owners, they're all amazing, great, smart guys that are uh, self-made guys, uh, businessmen. That uh, these these guys are they know how to, they know how to win in business, and uh, we're very fortunate to have an amazing ownership group that gives us resources, that believes in the plan, that lets uh, all of us kind of do our jobs, doesn't micromanage, and uh, it's it's a, it's a really special opportunity that we have in front of us. Um, our ownership group is also known as the New Jersey Devils. They own the Delaware Senators. They own the uh, they all be very fast. And um, you know, they, they look continue to love, figure out like what's next. How do they continue to grow in the sports entertainment uh, area? So that's pretty pretty interesting. Most uh, most places that works, not all places that work, and most you know, ownership groups don't see the world through that lens. They buy a team, they're very content, it's great, and that's what they do. Right? They focus on the team. And um, but they're not necessarily like, hey, what, what else can we do? So for people like me, it's really cool. It's like, they want to grow, um, which 
fascinating for people like me. It gives people like me an opportunity to have you know, new ideas and throw stuff out there and feel like it's okay to have these kind of really cool growth ideas. That's, that's really special. Hey, Tim. Yes, right. And, um, as much as I want to allow you to keep taking questions, we uh, want to kind of keep an eye sure. on time so people can get out. Are you going to be to hang around for a while? You know, what I actually have to do tonight is um, we have our uniform unveiling tomorrow. So I'm going to rehearsal and I'm going to the um, dance team auditions tonight. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm surprised you showed up here. Yeah. So I'd love to hang out and talk more. But how about that? Can I take one more? Is that fair? One more question. Quick question. Yeah. Okay, who's got the best question? <laughs> Who's going to pay? Who is a season ticket holder? You're an ass. All right, yeah, okay. So I have a question. Okay. Your thoughts on using technology to increase sponsorship revenue and, and give your sponsors better access to the things that are going on? Great question. I'm timing, so, I'm timing it, Tim. Is that I'm timing it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we made money in the following. We get national contracts and TV, right? National TV deals, uh, local TV deals, um, tickets, sponsorship. Uh, and there's some, some other areas for smaller buckets, right? So merchandise or, or uh, concessions. By the way, if anybody ever says that uh, a team signed a player to sell merchandise, to the team, <laughs> there's nothing further from the truth. You can never be that often merchandise sales. Just want to make sure everybody knows that. It's not true. It's not true. Um, yeah, so yeah, they find that it's not about Tim Tebow, 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 it's not that your sponsors or potential sponsors have a more uh, higher proclivity to want to do this with you. So a big, big area of our business is how do we grow our sponsorship revenue. Uh, so technology that can help us do that or connect to our fans better that help sponsors connect our fans uh, is, is shooting towards us. We should talk. Okay. All right, yeah, thank you.